Good morning. My name is Botond, um, and I'm here to talk to you about ClangD. ClangD is the leading open source C++ language server. So what is a language server? It's a software component that serves as the back end of editor features that are semantically aware, such as code completion or navigation. And it can interface with uh, various different editors, such as the ones shown on this slide, uh, through something called the language server protocol. So why have a language server protocol? Before ClangD came along, I used as my editor uh, Eclipse, which was at one point perhaps the state-of-the-art C++ ID, at least among open source options. Uh, but it didn't remain the state-of-the-art. And the reason it didn't remain didn't remain the state of the art is that its audience was the intersection of people who use the specific language C++ and the specific editor Eclipse. And the size of that intersection, the size of that audience was not large enough to sustain the development effort required to keep up with an evolving language like C++. Whoops. So, uh, thankfully, along came the language server protocol, which allowed decoupling the parts specific to a language from the parts specific to an editor. So, if you have m different editors and n different languages, whereas before you needed a different piece of software for every combination of editor and language, now you just need one client for every editor and one server for every language, and they all interoperate through one common protocol we've turned an m times n problem into an m plus n problem. So, what does ClangD do, do for you as a programmer? Uh, I gave a few representative examples of its features. I'll give you a moment to get over the shock of my light color scheme. Um, so, it has presentation features. The first statement in that screenshot shows uh, inlay hints. Clang annotates your code in line with interesting information. For example, parameter names next to your function arguments. That's basically your editor giving you that named arguments feature that the C++ language probably never will. It also shows the use types. Uh, the second statement shows you errors as you type. And then Clang has navigation features, such as searching for all references to uh, a symbol across a code base. This works across translation units. And it's also semantically aware. If you're searching for, a, if you have a, a function that's overloaded and you search for a particular overload, it will only find calls to that overload. Of course, Clangdy supports code completion, also semantically aware. In this screenshot, Clangdy not only knows to only uh, provide completion proposals that are methods of the class vector, it also knows what type is expected by the context. Here it's type point and uh, it brings to the top methods that return that type. Uh, and lastly, uh, ClangD has refactoring features. That screenshot shows an example of uh, preview after uh, uh, previewing a rename of a type, again, across translation units. How do you set up ClangD if you want to use it? To provide its semantic features, ClangD uh, needs to know how you build your code. Uh, it gains this information by reading a metadata file called a compilation database, or compilecommands.json, which lists for every uh, file in your, in your code uh, how it's, uh, the compile flags of how it's compiled. It can be generated in a variety of ways. I give two examples. First, many build systems have built-in support for it. With CMake, you just add a flag, and it's generated at, con at configure time. Alternatively, for build systems that don't have dedicated support for it, there is a tool called build ear, or bear, <laughs> which wraps an arbitrary build command and listens for what compiler invocations it makes and records those in a compilation database. Uh, finally, how can you get involved in ClangD? You can, uh, it's part of the LLVM project. You can find us on Discord, Discourse, and of course, GitHub. All these links are linked from the uh, project website at clangd.llvm.org. And if you see this owl avatar or the name Enridge, that's me. It's an alias I sometimes use. So to sum up, uh, if you're not using any editors that are semantically aware, consider trying clangd. 
And if you'd like to get involved, we very much welcome and appreciate your contributions. Thank you.